So um, officially opening the meeting for discussion of possible design guideline changes. December 6, 2016. So um, the floor is open. The floor is open. <laughs> and I don't know um, officially the best way to go through this. I just read through and started highlighting different areas. Um, and we could go through it that way, or we could talk about just some things that you you brought up. Well, that one again, yeah. other than the More systematic system. way to go through it, okay. is just you know get your highlights, and then if we have additional things, you, because you probably identify most of the stuff that we would count so on. Okay. Yeah, and I think that the way you guys had planned it was sort of take it section a couple sections at a time. Yeah, I think, yeah. So I had sent out the notice because we talked about doing section one and two and given that we're low on representation it probably makes sense not to go beyond one and two for tonight and yeah. then just pick up um, yeah that discussion we just thought is probably should be yeah. tabled for a, a larger group right. because yeah. that, that's one of the more important Meaty ones, ones yeah. yeah right, right. let's see what's in one and, <laughs> and so i i guess um i think Maybe part part of definitions of applicability or something <laughs> Part of this too is, is just um, recognizing that this guideline was created in 1999 and that um, we're almost <laughs> 20 years beyond that and it oh might make goodness. sense. Well, <laughs> From the beginning. Okay, so it's 17 years, <laughs> so you don't. <laughs> but that maybe there might need to be some, some updates. Um, yeah. I, and I just want to emphasize some of the things that come across and, and the reason the manual was provided originally was to ensure that buildings um, maintain the Northampton pedestrian scale historical and architectural character and that it is just a guideline, which I think, I think we still want it to, to be that. Um, one of the things I think, uh, just going through it, it has an index of photographs and it would make sense to have um, someone go through all the photographs and see if those buildings actually still exist. They're relevant. Yeah, because I think some of the, the, for example, the police station is probably the one that comes to mind no longer. That right. Longer right. Um, yeah. um, and that maybe we want, might want to take more photos of examples of buildings that have tried to fit into the guidelines and been successful. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, we we're just talking about um, a couple of, of examples of that sort. Um, and even so, um, buildings like the one behind the old fire station well, there are two so now. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking first of the original one that take, took the you know one-story building and went above. It sort of makes it look like an entirely new building. Mm -hmm. So those are that's, those two come to mind for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be worthwhile to take a look at the Elm Street guidelines, that document, um, because I think it does some of the things that we need to do here, and it's a much newer um, you know, document. Okay. I don't know if you have. Is this online? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we could send out to the committee as yeah. a review. Sure. To the next, um, the next meeting. Yeah, I assume there are extra copies floating around the city. Okay. Hopefully, after this, we can maybe reproduce ours. You know, we've been moving towards all electronic, right. so my guess is we probably wouldn't create a paper format um, um, and just have it online, and then people can print it if they want. Still mm -hmm. a little old school, you know. I got we can print one. Get rid of that paper. <laughs> you know, I'm there, you push the button. I still got all those old magazines yeah. and all my can't let go. <laughs> um, so part one is the introduction or at least that's where I started for part one. And just going through um, some of the phrasing is one of the comments is, while the downtown has been blessed in recent years with some exemplary new buildings, which recent years was 1999. So um, I, again, I guess that's just another right. crisis that we should right. update it. 
Um, I think I'm thinking of well, that. That still holds true, though, you know? Yeah. What's that? Uh, that still holds true. We, in even the last 20, since it's been produced, we've been fortunate to have some yes. good infill buildings. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Uh, well, I think the other thing about this language is this was a brand new foray into mm -hmm. design review, so there was sort of a rationale about why these should be in place and maybe a different, um, slightly different um, vocabulary to so that it, um, to talk about the successful um, the successes because of the guidelines mm -hmm. um, and sort of that we've moved into a new phase um, might make sense here right because what this was saying is the reason this was created is because there were examples of incompatible and damaging new development right that was created which I think probably because of the design guidelines that hasn't hopefully happened since. Right. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much. Um, there's a whole bunch of description of the different types of buildings in Northampton, which is nice. And if we do go through and uh, redo this guidelines, I think it would be helpful for people or architects or designers who are from outside of the area to actually have photographs of some of these buildings. In, in with this, um, the description? Yeah, I think most of the really good presentations that we get, people do show other buildings in the area or in context as an example of what they're proposing. So right. we have something in here and that, that and stimulate it, And it's usually because those designers have come to town right. and visited. But here we're, we're describing the buildings that we like, mm -hmm. and it would be, um, it would be helpful for those who are out of town and maybe may not have time to come to town before they start their initial design, at least to have some documentation of them. I'm thinking that maybe there's a college intern somewhere that could take on this task. Yeah. No, we've I, actually gotten to several that have been, that have really good graphic skills and good sort of um, design focus. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that, that's all I had to say about the introduction piece. I don't know if you guys said anything else on the introduction. Um, Do no, you but, have, oh. no, I'm just going to say, I mean, but, you know, within, we have these examples, you know, like this, not this, within here already. But what are you saying is to have more photos so, of exemplary buildings that have happened since? No, no, there's this whole, you probably, I haven't looked at this part of the guideline in a long time, but it talks about uh, historical buildings within the context of Northampton specifically, and, and certain architects, like for example, City Hall and yeah, yeah, um, they mentioned Pratt and yeah, you know, right, other architects, right? Yeah. All in some of the residential buildings mm -hmm. that are historical that we like. I just think I don't think I wouldn't necessarily change the text because it's just historical text, mm -hmm. but I think it would be helpful to have. Photographs of some of the buildings that are mentioned within uh -huh. this text. Text is expanded. Yeah. It's just anytime you just see two pages of text, it's not good. Well, yeah, that's part of it too. <laughs> and especially if we're going to something that's electronic, then yeah. it yeah. it just really. lends itself to more graphics yeah. than, than text. Yeah, we used to call those Mego documents. Wow. My yeah. eyes glaze over. <laughs> that's okay. I haven't heard I'll that one before. I can't do it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other any other info about introductions? Or any other thoughts about introductions? Is there any? Yeah. Well, where does the process, the review process, come in? Do you mean review of the guidelines and yeah. amendments? So the no, and that an applicant would, oh. uh, or a citizen would, would want to find out how to, um, you know, enter into this process. Well, unfortunately, what happens is that people go in to apply for a permit. Right. It gets reviewed, and then they'll say, "Oh, this falls under the CBAC." And yeah, I think that's where I, I think something here to encourage potential applicants to come in for a workshop session 
um, before coming in with a fixed plan or materials ordered or something like that? So typically, um, I'm just going to pull up the, so the, these are the guidelines, the regulations right. that um, um, are, to go hand in hand with the guidelines, are what speak to sort of the, the process and, mm -hmm. and what um, needs to take place. Typically when someone is building as opposed to just window replacement, when there's a project that's new construction or additions, we do typically get um, phone call, exploratory phone calls from um, prospective um, applicants wanting to know what the permits are um, that would be required, you know, soup to nuts, do I need to go to planning board, zoning board, whatever. Um, and then if it's a big enough project, we have the, the preliminary technical review that's just one of you and Elon has come to um, several of those. So we have that, but it's not set up. I mean, for someone who's just got a contractor and is going to do you know, minor modifications or mostly interior renovations, they might not think to say, oh, I better check to see what district I'm in. So that's, the, that's where the gap is, I think. Um, and frankly, it's a gap almost anywhere in the city because people could be assuming they can do a project in a residential district and not realize that the structure is not conforming, so they need to go to the zoning board or whatever. Um, but you all may have ideas about it, particularly in the field if, from the other side, if you have um, gotten caught up in sort of not realizing or understanding what those rules are. I don't know if you have anything that would help out from your perspective to get that message across more clearly. Um, well, I guess, you know, whenever we're, work as an architect, whenever we're working on a project in a certain town, we'll always often call up the planning department or the building department and say, what's the permitting process going to be like? And that's very early in the process really during schematic design. So it's kind of on the, I, I think I think what's hard is when it's a, like Carolyn was saying, uh, it's someone who's just doing a small project and doesn't maybe even hire an architect to do it. They're, they're working with a builder who may not be as familiar with the zoning or permitting process. I do know one of the things that is difficult for Northampton in particular because everybody comes to me when there's a project in Northampton that says, where are those guidelines? I can never find the guidelines on the website. They have a hard time finding them. Yeah. Um, and it's, it is a few, it seems like it shouldn't be quite as deeply buried in the website as it is. Well, one of the things we could do, I'm just going to the code now. Um, so it's with chapter 156, which is the central business mm -hmm. ordinance. Um, but we also, on the planning office's web page, we've, um, uh, let me just go, we've um, put in a quicker link. So we have a link to um, codes, and it, zoning is one, wetlands, historic district subdivision. And then it's, it's all other city codes. So we could simply add central business architecture to that yeah. link. Yeah. Um, so that, that's fine. Um, and then we can have the catch all for everything else that we've forgotten <laughs> to put up there. Um, so we can do that sooner than later. Like, wait, we, I don't have to, yeah, we don't have to review. Yeah. 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 And I think. One of the things that we talked about is, is, and we, I think we've already discussed this sort of standardized, standardizing what is submitted for a review process. Yeah, and that's that's also that's on already on it. Yeah, and that's in the code section. So you, you would, um, well, once we put this link here, it'll take you right to the Center for Business Architecture requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but that's spelled out. So, part two is definitions. And
It starts out by talking about what is a historic building. And um, for the purposes of this manual, a historic building is defined as a building or portion thereof constructed prior to 1945. So is 1945 a date that's still still considered historic or yeah, well, what determined that date to begin with? Well, in 1999, <laughs> 1945 oh, was, was historic, I guess. It's usually 50 years old. Um, that, that's often the, the floating number that people tend to use. Um, although that should not preclude something that might have been built 10 years ago that is of such outstanding character that you would want to include it. And so that's why you usually put some flexibility in there, like usually 50 or more years old or something like that. Well, um, should the phrase, rather than partic a particular year, be something like yeah, 50 I'm or year, like 50 50 years or more old? Yeah. Well, I think... Um, You're mid-century modern. I don't know if there are that many examples around here, but certainly, you know, national, that a lot of that is taking on significant so, so that comes into play when we're looking at the next section, which we don't um, necessarily need to do now. But I'm just going to yeah. put it as a place marker because, you know, the right now, and maybe you want to rethink this, right now we have the four sort of classifications of buildings, historic, theme commercial, anomaly, and um, landmark. So by shifting so we so we still have regulations that um so again it's not about protecting historic buildings per se but we have regulation language or guideline language that um is different depending on the characteristic that's uh, or the the category that's identified mm -hmm. so um i don't know if that makes a difference to you in thinking of what historic is defined as here um, so historic buildings are have a little bit, um, if you recall, have a little bit um, more stringent standard, I would say, um, in terms of modification than certainly anomaly buildings and theme are um, transitional residential. So, you know, if a 19, so if we bumped up, if it's 50 years, then, gosh, are we up to? Um, 65. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then if you want to think of pre-1965, would you want to apply more stringent standards to a pre-1965 building than you would a theme commercial or a transitional residential? Not to say that you couldn't totally revamp, you know, those mm -hmm. criteria too, but I'm just throwing it out there to think about, mm -hmm. you know, when you're adjusting the time, it's probably going to affect how you treat those classified structures or categorized structures. Well, I guess in this whole review process, we're kind of going through it in chunks. Yeah. And and like you said, we're not looking at it as the whole uh, guideline. And I, I think it would be helpful that at the end, we kind of review all of the proposed oh, yeah. changes as they impact the entire set of yeah. guidelines. And so even though we're coming up with suggestions right now, I don't think that we're necessarily saying yeah. this is what it has to be. Okay. But um, So maybe circle this question mark, do we want to move it to 1965 or 55 or whatever yeah. the, number, the year is? Or do we want to reference it as 50 years? Oh, uh, right. So it's a floating. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of historic districts, they talk about uh, contributing buildings or non-contributing buildings when they're talking about historical significance. Mm -hmm. And that, terms like that might be easier to understand than anomaly buildings, uh, historic buildings. Uh, the, 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 those don't come to mind um, as easily understood, but contributing, non-contributing or some other way of phrasing like that might be worth taking a look at. I was just noticing the guidelines and they have this distribution of building types. Is there a survey 
a photographic survey that you can reference. You know, it, it tells you how there are, you know, 85 themed buildings, 35 transitional residential buildings. Who did that survey and where is it? So, um, I should have brought that. We have the list and it's online, but I have the copy okay. with me. I mean, but in my is, office. Yeah. And so, I don't know if you recall a few years ago. Well, so as the district expanded, we have to categorize the new buildings coming in. So, that list, that number is old so that's in the guidelines. Um, it's not, I can't say that it's photographically documented. It's just in a list form, a text Address form for, uh, with year built, style of architecture. Um, and then how you guys have categorized it. And then there was at one point not only adding buildings, but um, there were some mistakes in there, so that was corrected. Um, but if you, you know, I don't know if it's important to have a photographic um, documentation of each and every one of the buildings. My guess is these samples right. are meant to sort of illustrate what those classification categorizations mean. And then because there's so many buildings <laughs> that they didn't photo document them all. Right. It's possible to do because- But because of electronic media now, really, you know, you got some intern or something, you could go around and yeah, just bring right. it yeah, goes on to that list That's electronically. True. And just That's true. give a more visual representation. For it's almost create a Google map or something. Right. Right. You well, that's true. The, the buildings and get a picture of it. Well, the other thing too is when you're reading the building, you it takes some time for you to get that image of the building. I mean, you guys all know downtown, but even so, you think, you know, ten seconds, twenty seconds. Which one is that? Yeah. yeah. And if you had the picture, then you're like, oh yeah, it's that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so that was under. What that, that well, I just had to I was in. I, I jumped ahead, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> no, I was okay. just trying to think about when there is a list there of all these buildings that would be useful to. Well, and also, that. is that that's in the definition section for the list of the buildings? No, I think yeah, you in, jumped ahead. Yeah, it's in uh, app, app, applicability. You jumped to the third section. <laughs> 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 yeah, does that list key into the uh, National Register document? listing the district only the land so no so for the landmark buildings those are ones that mm -hmm. I'm almost certain are on the National Register okay um, but otherwise but again that's where the words contributing and non contributing come in on your National Register listing if it's a district does it contribute to the district or does it not contribute to the district um, so there might be language in that document that um, pertain to this. Yeah, just to the historical definition of, a, of right. whether a building is considered a, a contributing historical building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, theme buildings definitions. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any issue with the theme building, but I think one of the questions, which again, I don't think we have to resolve tonight, but it, we may bring this up as we go through the entire guidelines is should there be more definitions of building types and specifically examples of buildings that are have been built in the last 20 years that are not um, historical because they talk about theme buildings are typically Victorian period two to five story masonry commercial buildings so um, does Victorian period literally mean it was built in the Victorian age or that it has Victorian characteristics? So Victorian is a very nasty word <laughs> in architectural history. <laughs> but I, I'm just wondering if, if, what I'm trying to get at is there are buildings that are older um, from, you know, turn of the century or, bef or before and then we have sort of modern theme buildings which are based on some of those design mm -hmm. elements. Right. And so should we have a category that's called modern theme buildings? And what does that what does that mean? Or again, 
just, I mean, we could have a section of new buildings and they don't have to be themed, they could be like anomaly buildings, but just a section of new buildings that have been put into the district and relate and explain what category they belong to. Right, but so I don't think that these actually fall into a category right now because they're not the old theme buildings and they're not. Well, not in terms of their age. Oh, by but this in definition. Terms of their character. Character. Right, right. You know, a compatible building or something like that, uh, just new compatible design. And that's basically what we're trying to review here and encourage is compatible design for new construction. So modern theme or theme commercial compatible or something like yeah, that. Theme compatible. Because um, that building, yeah, virtually fulfills all avenue? the guidelines except for, what's that? Is that Strong Block? The Strong Avenue? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, it literally fulfills all the guidelines with the exception of the date it was built. Mm -hmm. But it really fulfills those design guidelines, you know. Right. So. Uh, um, someone. What, was it you that was saying that um, the windows are really too small on the upper floors? It wasn't me, but I can <laughs> see how, well, I'd almost say that these windows are too small. The, the proportions don't diminish as they go up the facade. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's just it's an interesting, uh, that stuck in my mind that someone had, some, oh, it was an architect at some point, you know, really Point evaluating today. the building, you know, after being constructed, saying, wait a second, this doesn't, this isn't right. This not, like, the proportionality <laughs> wasn't right. And so it's just interesting sort of, in, you know, to reflect back on mm -hmm. um, what was, and maybe, maybe, I don't, I don't, I think Peg was staffing the CONSCOM, I mean, the Central Business Architecture Committee at the time this was, went through the process, so, I don't remember if that was, maybe that was discussed and approved, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Way before my time. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, I wasn't on it. Um, Were you on it when this came Yeah, in? yeah. So, I think, um, so anyway, I think that's a good point. So, either modify the definition or, and or create new categories or subcategories. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Or, um, or one or the other, I guess. Yeah. Um, landmark buildings, I didn't have any. I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty straight up. Yeah. Um, transitional or residential as well. I didn't have any. Um, and that's I thought it might be helpful to maybe add some. One of the buildings, I, I think that's that was done well was the on State Street, the um, next to uh, the Sorry. Cooper's, is it Cooper's Corner? The oh, Sirius. Sirius, yeah. You know, it was supposed to be a restaurant. It never became a restaurant where he combined the two buildings. Right, right. Uh, they're working on the interior now. Oh, yeah. is it happening? Fingers are crossed. Okay. But do I you know anything nice about that? Yeah, so it's a the for sale so. sign is no longer on the yeah. front of the building. Oh. But I haven't talked with Paul Sirio. I go in there from time to time. But, and I usually ask him about it. And he says, oh, the economy. Yeah. It's his brother, right, who owns it? I think it's all in the family. Oh, okay. so. Yeah. So I had heard a rumor about someone who was going to take it over. And it was not retail or restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if that's true. You know, it's been a while since I had initially heard that. Um, so it seems like it's slow going to get to that place. Um, so my only comment is, would it be helpful to have more photographs of examples of these types of buildings? Okay. Yeah, I think electronically that would be so easy to do. And then, of course, our beloved old police station is no more. So. Yay. Maybe we can come up with some other uh, <laughs> anomaly buildings, I'm sure. Well, you know, like the bakery would be a good example because right. that had an addition that was also added to it. Right. So, um, Bon Rigosa? Yeah. 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 With 
their huge landscape improvement. <laughs> what is, uh, this is all the topic, but so what is going on with Elm Street? That's section one and two. That landscape I did go into section three just because I, yeah. Oh, oh that's a we'll beautiful save that for another um, time. Okay. Uh, entryway. You know how it is on um, by the gates? West Gate? Yeah, it's going to look it's a lot like it. Oh, yeah. Just it's based on the dog and the old tree structure. Oh, we should. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't get to so say I think, I think we're through um, sections one and two. And, um, yeah. We'll pick well, up the yeah. next two sections next time. Yeah, and I think that probably makes sense because it's really sort of getting into the, the heart of all of that. Um, I'll try to, so the next meeting would be the first week of January, I think, right? Second, wait, what, are, what day are we? This is the sixth, so it's the first Tuesday you guys decided, right? Well, that's right, we're on the standard schedule. Is it the first or second Tuesday? What, is, what is, are we today? This is the, <laughs> it is the first, first Tuesday. Yeah. So it would be January 3rd. Um, Seems like a little soon, right? Up to the holiday. But, I mean, you well, know. Monday's off. Uh, it's still an official holiday. Right. So, I don't know. It's up to you guys now. It's okay with me. It'd be good if we could confirm that more people could be here or not. Yeah. So why don't I um, check in? Tomorrow, I'll send out an email for the January 3rd meeting. Um, and hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> Is that typical of this of this theme building that the, the windows will typically get smaller as you go up? Is that very common? Uh, I don't know that it's very common, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had some guidelines in terms of window <laughs> arrays, but I never remember discussing the, the, the scale, you know, the size of that. Yeah, usually <laughs> they're the same going up unless it's a drastic reduction, like a very narrow right. window band coming across. The but here you can see these, there's sort of three parts to these windows, and it looks like, maybe not, that those upper no, windows just, are yeah, smaller. I'm just um, Did you guys um, notice the anomaly car in front of the anomaly building too? <laughs> <laughs> it's really dated. <laughs> it occurs to me that a simple brochure uh, that could be handed out to somebody explaining what these guidelines are or the process might be nice. This was uh, done by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for one of their housing rehab programs. Um, but again, it's, it's not the full-blown guidelines or something. It's just something that a property owner or a contractor could pick up and be aimed in the right direction. Yeah. And I think that might be a good way to communicate. Or um, if it's all going to be electronic, have some way to consolidate that information as an introduction to the bigger stuff. Yeah. Um, so I didn't I don't have anything else I don't have minutes but um, I think I sent you all to this week we have the AP gallery with um, the theme about health and community design so there's a reception tonight and there's Smith um, engineering students are discussing and uh, presenting their initial evaluations of parklets sort of yeah. um, parklet designs you guys are welcome to go yeah, and just yeah, wander over. Our neighbor runs that program, uh, Susanna Howe. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Susanna. Yeah. <laughs> and you did some window work at their house. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that going to be the up tool, all week or is it just up the fireplace thing. Yeah. No, it's all, so the, they did little models and those are in the windows. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then inside they have different um, sort of um, real scale size um, mm -hmm. uh, possibilities for thinking about different um, you know furniture mm -hmm. furnishings and those are in there week too okay. um, and then That's great. Friday is the stroll so right. it'll be open for that and there's some too. AIA thing on Friday yeah, yeah. right 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 yeah. I think our ukulele group is going to participate in the oh, stroll I'm, I'm looking 
Joe will be there. The lights are amazing downtown. Yeah. They really yeah. went above and beyond this year. Yeah. They're new, funky. Yeah, the sort of dripping. Right. Thanks. <laughs> You get into an accident watching this. I did Dallin Trivet pay for all of since he uh, okay. watched the uh, Bay District. <laughs> then, no what, comment. There was something he, he said he would we, we are still on the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, can we officially close? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. This meeting is officially closed.